New Year's. In the West, this celebration means fireworks and festivities beginning on December 31st and leading into a new year on January 1st. But not every culture celebrates like this. This is Ancient Origins, and today we'll be looking at the top 10 fascinating New Year's celebrations. The Chinese New Year is one of the oldest traditions in the world. For more than 3,000 years since the Shang Dynasty, the Chinese have celebrated the coming of a new year in remarkable ways. In its earliest days, this festival was linked to the sowing of spring seeds, but eventually found ties to the legend of a monstrous creature called Nian. To protect themselves and frighten off the beast, villagers made loud noises, decorated their homes with red ornaments, and burned bamboo. The tactic seemed to work and bright colors and lights are still found in the Chinese New Year's festivities today. These days, traditional delights are food, family reunions, and the gifting of lucky money in a red envelope. Lion and dragon dances, drums, fireworks, and firecrackers fill the streets. Chinese New Year falls in late January or early February, on the second new moon after the winter solstice. This is calculated with a lunar calendar that dates back to the second millennium BC. The Chinese have linked each year to one of the 12 animals represented in the zodiac. Noruz is the name given to the Persian New Year, a 13-day long spring festival. Many of the traditions linked to this celebration have origins in the ancient past and are still practiced in Iran and other parts of the Middle East and Asia. The Persian New Year is celebrated at the vernal equinox in March and is often associated with the Zoroastrian religion. Scholars believe that it has existed since at least the 6th century BC, making it incredibly ancient. Noruz is one of the few ancient Persian festivals to survive Iran's conquest by Alexander the Great in 333 BC and the rise of Islamic rule in the 7th century AD. This New Year festival focused on rebirth and the return of spring. Noru's traditions include feasting, exchanging gifts, lighting bonfires, dyeing eggs, and sprinkling water, a symbol of creation. Sri Lankan Sinhalese and Tamils have separate New Year's celebrations that fall on the same day. Alutha Vyurada, the Sinhalese New Year, is held on April 13th or 14th and marks the end of the harvest season. Theirs is the belief in an astrological time gap between the end of the old year and the beginning of a new one. This occurs as the sun passes from the house of Pisces to the house of Aries in the celestial sphere. Buddhist rituals and social gatherings take place during this time. Gifts are exchanged, an oil lamp is lit, and rice milk is made. The Nile River was the lifeblood of ancient Egypt so it's not surprising that their new year corresponded with its annual flood. The new year took place when the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, was visible once again following a 70-day absence. This date often fell in mid-July, just before the annual flooding of the Nile, an event which helped farmlands stay fertile. The ancient Egyptians called it Wepet Renpet, or opening of the year. Feasts and religious ceremonies heralded a period of rebirth and rejuvenation. During the reign of Hatshepsut, what was called a festival of drunkenness took place in the first month of the year. Evidence for this event was uncovered at the Temple of Mut. The celebration has been linked to a myth in which the war goddess Sekomit wanted to kill all humans but was stopped when she was tricked into getting drunk by the sun god Ra. This was a huge festival celebrated with music, sex, and lots and lots of beer. In Kudatash, the Ethiopian New Year is celebrated on September 11th or 12th, the approximate end of three months of heavy rain. Mountains and fields are filled with blooming daisies at this time, and the old bless the young who look forward to new prospects. Traditionally, this time of year has been linked to the return of the Queen of Sheba to Ethiopia after she visited King Solomon in Jerusalem around 980 BC. Today, large celebrations are held by almost all of the cultures throughout the country. The festivities start with the burning of a twig tree on New Year's Eve. Then, New Year's Day begins with the slaughtering of animals and blessings of bread and tela, a traditional brew. 
The Scottish have a particularly interesting way of celebrating the new year. They call the holiday Hogmanay, and it provides evidence of their dramatic history of Viking invasions and ancient pagan rituals. The origins of Hogmanay have been traced back to the winter solstice rituals. The Roman celebration of Saturnalia and the Viking celebrations of Yule were mixed into Scottish festivities around the new year. During the Middle Ages, the pre-existing festivals were overshadowed by the feasts surrounding Christmas. The Protestant Reformation brought more changes as the celebration of Christmas was discouraged. Gift giving and festivities associated with that holiday were moved to the New Year, creating the uniquely Scottish celebration of Hogmanay. The first footing is a traditional belief claiming that the first person to cross a home's threshold after midnight on New Year's Eve will determine the homeowner's luck for the new year. The ideal visitor? A dark-haired man bearing gifts such as whiskey, coal for the fire, small cakes, or a coin. The belief dates back to the 8th century when a blonde visitor would be likened to a Viking. That was a very bad sign. La Doce Uvas de la Suerte, or the 12 Grapes of Luck, is a New Year's practice in Spain dating back to the 1800s. The interesting tradition consists of eating a grape with each bell strike at midnight of December 31st. According to the tradition, this leads to a year of prosperity. In some areas, it is believed that this magic ritual wards away witches and general evil. It's usually treated like old superstition now and is viewed mostly as a fun cultural tradition to welcome the new year. The Japanese hold annual Forget the Year parties, called Boninkai, to prepare for a new year and forget the past problems and concerns. It is primarily a drinking party that takes place at the end of the year and is generally held among groups of co-workers or friends. The purpose of the party, as its name implies, is to forget the woes and troubles of the past year and to look hopefully to the new year, usually by consuming large amounts of alcohol. A Boninkai does not take place on any specific day, but they're usually held in December. The Greeks serve a traditional cake called Vasilopida, with a coin hidden inside it. It's thought the person who gets the coin will have good luck in the following year. It is associated with St. Basil's Day on January 1st in most of Greece, but in some regions the traditions surrounding a cake with a hidden coin are attached to Epiphany or Christmas. On December 31st, Buddhist temples all over Japan ring their bells or gongs a total of 108 times to symbolize the 108 sins in Buddhist belief. They ring the bell and wait until the sound dies down before striking it again. The whole process can take about an hour, starting in the old year and finishing right as the clock strikes midnight. It's hoped that with each bell being rung, the bad moments, the bad deeds, and bad luck of the year are wiped away, and the new year can be a fresh beginning. On New Year's Eve, it's also very common to eat special extra-long buckwheat noodles called Toshikoshi Soba to celebrate long lives ahead. Dive into more meaningful history on our Ancient Origins channel, and have a happy new year. Thanks for watching.